Like a GeoOffice, the code list import script. This video applies to all recent versions of Like a GeoOffice. We're often asked if there's a way to bring a code list in maybe a text file or a common delimited file into Like a GeoOffice. And the answer to that question is yes, you can do that. Uh, if we take a look at the main, uh, when we open up Like a GeoOffice and we go into the scripts, we'll see the very first listing up here is the code list import script. And with this script, we could either bring in ListCAD code lists, uh, which is not as common, or common delimited uh, text files. So first, uh, before we do that, let's take a look at a typical file that we might want to input. And if I bring this up, I've got a, um, a simple common delimited file that consists of the code group, comma, the code, comma, and the code description. So we can see here that uh, we've changed this all so that the code group is default the whole way down. These could be made as different groups like roads and utilities and those type of things if you are grouping your codes. Uh, but we're keeping it relatively simple with this particular list. Uh, this one uh, came from somewhere and was actually in a Word document and had to be manipulated in a uh, uh, text editor in Excel to bring the original input into this form. But once it's there, then we're good to go with the actual uh, code list import script. So now let's see how that would run through the script. Back in like a geo office, uh, if I right click on the code list import script and press run, the script runs and it gives me a little message and then I'm ready to fill in the input. If I browse and take a look to find my code list file, I can see that I've got it uh, highlighted right here because I was actually previously in that folder. I'll select that common delimited file and bring that in. I would change my file type to comma separated text file. As we just saw a moment ago, it's already in the format that's required. And there was the one header line, so I'm going to tell it to ignore, in this case, line one, because that was not a code list, or I mean, that was not a code, that was just a, a description of how this needs to be in that file. Then we'll just give this uh, code list a name, uh, how it will appear in LGO. In this case, I'm going to call it SC underscore codes. And then at that time, all my entry is prepared, and I just press import code list and let the script do its work. Okay, that took a few minutes to complete, and I had paused while it was running through the process. And now we see that the import of the code list SC codes was successful. So we'll just uh, accept that with an OK. And we'll leave the scripts area. Now if we go up to our code list tab and, uh, the, under the management toolbar, uh, we'll see that we've in fact got our uh, list, uh, the SC codes. Everything is under the default group like we had had it defined. And we can see that our codes are listed uh, one after another right on down the line. Now at this point we could edit these codes, add attributes or whatever. This first example, once again, was a simple code list with just a code, description, and then, of course, the required group. A couple of problems with this particular one is if we scroll down here a little bit, a couple of these code descriptions were a little bit too long. So those really should be taken care of prior to the input. The script allows them, but notice code 186 is electrical dash, or I mean, I'm sorry, underground dash electric dot box. Well, if I were to right click on that and go to the properties to edit it, uh, you'll notice here when I press OK uh, to accept that edit, it tells me that the field contains 20 characters and there's a maximum 16 allowable. So that which means that for me to, uh, uh, you know, complete the edit on this code, I would have to make it an allowable code. Uh, code descriptions are only allowed to be 16 characters. So in this case, to accept that, maybe I could just change this to UG and then press OK. Now the code's been changed and, uh, you know, we're ready to go. I could also do the same thing quickly with the next code. And there's several others in this list. Normally, I would prefer to take those, take care of those uh, pr prior to the import. But I did want to show you the impact of what happens if you've imported your code list 
and not taking care of some of those issues. In our previous example, we imported a code list that was just a group code and code description. The code list import script allows us to extend this a little bit and essentially we can build our attribute structure if we're utilizing one. So after the code description, we would follow that with a comma, the name of the first attribute, an equal sign, and an indication of the value type. I'll explain those in a moment. If there are multiple attributes, we separate them with a slash, then attru attribute name, equal sign, and indication of the attribute type. The attribute name could be string or type or invert, just depending on the type of code and what kind of attributes would be associated with that code. The double pound signs indicate the value type for the attribute. Uh, minus one would indicate that it's a text value, so we could uh, might have asphalt or asphalt pavement. Uh, a one would be indicated indicative of an uh, integer value, and that might be in a case of a string or a line type line value. Uh, we you know have line one, line two, string one, string two, just a straight counting number. A real value would be indicated with a one and a decimal point after the equal sign. An example of that might be a sewer invert. So we would have, um, uh, you know, 10.33 or 12.92 or whatever the case would be. Just a reminder, if there's multiple attributes, they're separated by a slash, not by um, a comma. So... We've created a small example and we'll bring that in through the uh, code list import script and see how that goes. We'll discuss that when we get there. Okay, now we'll proceed with our final example. We've just got a very small uh, example of a code list. There's actually three code groups. There's roads, utils, and control. The roads group has a couple of codes with some attributes. Uh, the first one, EP. For edge of pavement has a string attribute and a type attribute. The center line attribute only has a string attribute. And then the remaining two codes in the other groups are just a standard code, uh, code description type scenario. So let's take that through the script and see how this goes for us. Uh, as normal, we'll just uh, run our code list import script. Uh, we'll go and find the file that we're going to import. I had called it code underscore ats.txt. Um, it is a comma separated file. There were no header lines in this one, so there's no lines to ignore. And we're just going to call this uh, C and A for code and attribute. And we'll import the list. And now it's said that it's successfully done, so we'll just end that. We'll close our script. We'll go to our code list management area. And take a look, and sure enough, here's our CNA code list. If I expand this, I'll see that I've got my road, my util, and my control group. If I look into my controls group, I see I've got the edge of pavement and center line code. And if I expand on that further, I'll see that my edge of pavement has a spring, st string in the type attribute. My center, light, center line just has a string attribute. And then, of course, the utils and the man. Uh, had the manhole code with no attributes and control had the iron pipe code with no attributes. So hopefully this shows you several ways that the code list script can be utilized and how you set your information up when you're bringing in codes from another system to import to like a GeoOffice. As always, if you require more information, check our website at leica-geosystems.com. For support, send an email to survey.support at likeaus.com or you can make support inquiries and obtain other information from MyWorld. If you haven't registered for MyWorld, we'd recommend that you do so now.